very good morning to everyone today we will discuss about some genetic disease prevention and about the behavior of animals and how we can know about the medicinal values of a plants from the behavior of animal this is the part of training program on medicinal plant this is the second session <coughs> so i have written one sentence if we could read the animal behavior could read the key potential of medicinal plants so today we will discuss about the genetic disease prevention one question like how did sparrow learn to collect nicotine heavy cigarette buds to reduce mite infection in their nest so it's a clue to know about the medicinal values of a particular thing here you can observe two photographs in one photograph you can observe a threatened bird indian skimmer in second photograph you can observe a very common uh, cultural grasses saccharum spontaneum or castandi so here we also found that uh, they try to make the nest just near the saccharum spontaneum because near the saccharum spontaneum so they get okay less uh, heat less temperature so this study this relationship also give idea about the characterization of medicinal plants these are the some questions that uh, who discovered the medicinal values of a plant while life for human beings so we will discuss here here is a one paper published okay one mani hai phytum falbum usually we when we read some papers we think that uh, that person had uh, really discovered like anti parasitic anti oxidant and inflammatory antiseptic values of the plant species but they didn't discover just they justified scientifically validated it is discovered by a wildlife okay here we can observe like in one place we found that cats consuming grasses and after some time say okay she used to vomit so it also indicate that it's a, uh, it's a behavior animal species have developed their own pharmacy from nature so this is the self medication source of medicinal agent so it is a story just i try to give information like in 1960 one scientist uh, sorry one group of scientist they studied and they found that chimpanzee consuming aspella leaves chimps were swelling leaves but aspella leaves have less or no nutritional value then why they are consuming this is the question so it was the question of those researchers and they found that the chimpanzee consuming not for food purposes but they were consuming for medicinal purposes in 1996 michael huffman suggested that he documented that parasite ridden constipated chimpanzee in tanzania chew the leaves of noxious plant it would normally avoid by the next day chimpanzee was completely recovered so it again okay uh, indicate that uh, the chimpanzee consumed the leaves is under the self medication or for medicinal purposes not for the food purposes so the hopman theory for the establishment of self medications like the plant consumed cannot be a regular part of the animal diet the plant must provide little or no nutritional value to the animal the plant must be consumed during those time of year when parasites are most likely to cause infections so other animals in the group don't participate so new tools for the pharmacological research why in nature there are some questions so you can ask to yourself like uh, these are some questions uh, completely amazing why they are doing such types of things and the answer is only self medication so in the, the another scientist another researcher barbara froth hopman in during 2007 to 2009 in salagona national park they observed that pygmy chimps consuming a shrub manifatum falbum the animal would layer the leaves on their tongue produce saliva and fold the leaves back forming a ball while avoiding their leaves and they published their works in the american journal of primatology and panas it also indicate that they are talking about the self medication that means they are talking about the source of medicinal agent so here i tried to illustrate 
like many phytum phylum big rainy seasons rainy season why because in the rainy seasons they consume the leaves herbivores and also they consume leaves with the eggs so consume leaves with larva of insect or parasite and they need the anti helminthing agents so they started or they start consuming many many phytum phylum or some other plant species having the similar character or similar secondary metabolites so you can observe here that am phalbum package of leaves still folded as recovered from facies package unfolded manually here also you can observe that plant eating by a dog dog typically show no signs of illness and they do not vomit after plant eating white nosed cotis take the methanol that menthol sorry menthol scented resin from the bark of tatanisca aspera rub it into their own fur it means kill ectoparasite like ticks plus also it like a repellent against mosquitoes so resin and resin has a tri terpenes so we are talking uh, about the zoo pharmacogenesis that means the therapeutic and prophylactic behavior of a animals from there we extract a agent having the medicinal values to prevent or reduce the harmful effect of pathogens and toxins so one example i have written here like one day a couple of million year ago an animal had a stomach ache for reason unknown grabbed a leaf okay showed one eat or swallowed and felt better the animal remembered the action and went to the same plant whenever the stomach ache returned and passed their knowledge on to their progeny that is called zoo pharmacogenesis how self healing animals could save human and some uh, example you can observe some researchers also they have published some papers like knowledge on consumption of medicine plants by golden langur in assam now medicinal plants and wildlife a journey from animal to manufacturing of drugs you can observe some evidences some scientific evidences published paper you can observe here like many parrot species in the americas africa and papua new guinea consume soil which both release minerals and absorb toxic compounds from the gut so these are the some fact some evidences some publications it so that if we uh, could read the animal behavior we can find a agent for a uh, medicinal purposes for a uh, what using that means uh, for the formulation of drugs would arms incorporate resin into their nest to inhibit the growth of microorganisms you can observe these all are published literature it indicate that we should learn about the behavior and from there we took we should take action okay these are all about the elephant and plants you can observe the elephant and plants again the elephant and plants these all elephants and plants okay we also published like food plants of okay, an elephant having medicinal values <clears throat> this is a one book uh, also you can observe so, like tuberous plant like dioscoria corculogo costus asparagus roots of many climbers the wild boar they consume okay uh, to kill the endoparasites you can observe like a specific type of plants they have a specific types of medicinal uses and uh, the those specific type of plants are consumed by wild goat so you can observe about the indian squirrel also they consume the pulp nut seed and here i have given the table about the preferred food plant of indian giant squirrel that have also medicinal values we have published a book also you can read from uh, our, our research get you can download from google and you can read a uh, bifonal species versus medicinal plants as per the behavior of bifonal okay you can observe the uh, medicinal values of a plant species you can observe that we have published some papers and we are trying to correlate the medicinal or food values of the plant species why a wildlife they are consuming a certain types of plants so it also indicate that it could be a what a platform for making conservation strategy with the community so we always promote the community conservation so here we need to do lot of work i think it means what i am i would like to say that we have to understand 
the behavior of wildlife to know about the medicinal village of a plant species. So thank you very much for the second session, third session again. Okay, we will give tomorrow.